this has officially been i think the worst week in crypto with everything that has happened uh, we had this i would say massive massive blow up of ftx the second largest exchange turned out to be pretty much a scam and we're hearing more and more interesting developments uh, on the front of their ceo sam bankman fried uh, there's a great article on coindesk that just summarizes everything with a timeline and i'm sure they're going to keep updating this uh we're not going to go obviously through everything that has happened uh, i have already posted a video about this and you can see you know many articles but by much smarter people than me so i'm pretty sure uh if you don't know what we're going to be talking about uh uh you will catch up very quickly <clears throat> before we continue with um, this video um i just wanted to say that in my eyes this is definitely the biggest screw up we've had in crypto just because of the size we've had many hacks many exchanges have been um you know have scammed people out of their tokens but i think the scale and just the trust that everybody had in ftx uh, including myself i didn't have an account until just recently with them and i managed to get out of uh, their exchange because i had some funds there without an issue but i've heard so many stories about people getting really badly burned by this and i'm seeing people that have um, i don't know 50 percent of their net worth uh on ftx and people even like tom brady and everyone pretty much everyone had a lot of trust on ftx and this was obviously a huge mistake um, and there are some rumors now going on that sam is on the run and you know that they stole some money from uh the accounts and some of the employees are running with them this is becoming like a real real netflix uh story and probably we're gonna see something in the future about this uh, as a movie uh, but unfortunately, it really uh, brings the entire industry a few steps back, at least. <laughs> uh, of course, I, I still think we're going to recover. Uh, I think this is definitely an amazing opportunity for everyone that stuck around, that knew how to manage their funds. And whatever we've been discussing in the past months, you know, staying liquid, staying passive, uh, this will be the greatest time probably uh, in the next five to 10 years to start building and accumulating uh, wealth for the long term. And I'm not saying this only for uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, but also many other projects that are, will be on the rise. Probably there will be a slowdown before they come up, but they will be on the rise. And I'm sure that uh, once this whole um, healthy cleaning up of all these bastards uh, goes on uh, and is done, I think uh, we're going to have much better future for crypto. Uh, and this brings me actually to another point uh, related to uh, coin, uh, not coin, but crypto.com. There are a lot of rumors uh, circulating that they also don't have the assets and that they're also doing shady stuff. And the token actually CRO dropped massively uh, in the last few days. So just be aware of this. I don't know if people have funds there. It's a relatively small exchange. As you can see, we have dropped already uh, from this low, like 53%. But just on the day, we're down like, what is that? 25%. So just be aware of this. Other exchanges might follow the FTX path and destiny. Uh, I do have exposure on different exchanges, like, for example, Kraken, Coinbase, Binance are the main ones, and uh, KuCoin and some other exchanges. I do have several accounts, but I'm in the process of even further decreasing my exposure, although I'm quite confident in these three exchanges, at least in the first three. But, you know, I could be very wrong because I also mentioned that I don't believe FTX will go down. Uh, they might have issues and so on. Uh, but I was thinking they are very well regulated and that they won't go down. But obviously, I was wrong. Um, I was also wrong on some other thing that we're going to discuss uh, with Solana. So I think it's very important to point this out. And whatever someone tells you, including myself, and that's been my mantra always, just do your own research and only risk the amount of money and just the structure of your entire crypto portfolio risk only what you're ready to lose 100%. I lost some Ethereum uh, and some other shit coins on Celsius, still a very low amount. And that was, I would say, um, 
I, I actually knew that I, there's a risk of losing them, but I still left them just in case. Obviously, this was a mistake, uh, but we all make mistakes. Uh, some people made huge mistakes with FTX, but who can blame them? Also, you know, it's been tricky to to kind of dis dissolve all of this. Uh, and I was thinking about this a long time. So uh, it's not all of their the people's faults because uh, Sam Bankman fried was acting like you know they're so trustable and, and so even to the pretty much the last day before they announced bankruptcy uh, it's you know it's hard it's hard it's definitely in my opinion the one of the hardest times we've had uh, in crypto uh, but as I mentioned there's uh, a lot of opportunity uh, on the markets and uh, let me show you some things that I'm looking at and what I believe uh, we have to be prepared uh, from now on and uh, what uh, I will be buying for sure and what you should definitely look into as following narratives. Uh, I just dropped an alert about uh, GMX. We're also going to look at this. Uh, but before this, let's just walk through the last several buys and sales that I had during the crash. Uh, I'm going to jump into Bitcoin. And here you can see all my buys in blue. Uh, so I pretty much averaged down. Uh, first, this was before the Black Swan event. Uh, I was buying here at support just because we had so many reactions. Uh, but this time we broke down heavily. Uh, but again, all of these were relatively small size positions yet for me. Uh, the biggest one was actually down here around 15K. Um, and if we go further down, I will be buying much more heavily and I will be starting my dollar cost average. Uh, we had a pretty solid bounce. I didn't manage to catch this. Uh, I wrote a short somewhere from 18K. Uh, let me just find this. So from 18K... Uh, I took profit somewhere around here, around 16K and somewhere here in the low 16K also. Uh, so it was pretty good trades, pretty profitable for me, uh, kind of a hedge, but it was very small percentage relative to my overall Bitcoin exposure just because of the risk here, because we were already, you know, breaking down heavily. Um, so I didn't want to risk more. Uh, I didn't catch the bounce. This was definitely a good bounce also. And also another opportunity for shorting here on the four-hour chart. We can see it better. We tested almost perfectly 18K uh, resistance. So we turned this into resistance. And if we go back to the daily, you'll see that we've had, and we have discussed this level for a very long time, but 18200 uh, has been significant level of support. And now to the spots pretty much. Uh, we turned it into resistance, and this was definitely a good opportunity to short. Uh, but hey, I wasn't on the computer at that time. I wasn't uh, dialed in because I, there were so many things happening uh, before that. Uh, but anyway, I'm sure we're going to have much more opportunities in the future. Uh, I have drawn uh, just the most, the most recent uh, FIB extension here to the downside. And we can see here uh, more bleeding, especially if another exchange blows up uh, like uh, crypto.com or gates.io. I heard they also not a good thing about them. So I definitely think we can get to this level uh, around 15, 14, 15K. Uh, it's uh, the first FIB extension here. There's pretty much nothing here. It's open space, as you can see. Uh, this is back uh, in 2020. So this was after the breakout of 12K. Uh, so I wouldn't say there's much reactions in these levels. Uh, that's why I wanted to have the FIB here to help me out because I think here lower the 12K might be a crowded trade uh, and whatever, you know, even if we go down, I'll be even buying heavier. But all of this area, we've been discussing this for a long time now. All of this area, I believe, is a great accumulation play for Bitcoin. And in the long run, we can definitely uh, see good returns at least in my opinion, obviously not a financial advisor, but I will be buying much heavier in this area now that we have a confirmation that we have turned 18K to uh, a resistance. And if we go back to the previous cycle, you'll see here that after the dump that we had, uh, we pretty much bottomed out later. So if we had this dump from here, several days of green, 35% down, which is pretty much similar to what we have right now. And then we were down another to the bottom, another 20%. So I wouldn't be surprised that we see something like this slow bleeding 
unless we have another bankruptcy that triggers you know heavy selling but i wouldn't be surprised to see something like this volume dying out and potentially forming this kind of accumulation range which could take months years you know it really depends also what's going to happen um, in the economy so uh, i'm quite excited about this just even if you're not an uh, altcoin trader or if you're not a fan of uh, many altcoins this will be an opportunity of a lifetime uh, same with ethereum and i just want to show you because after the update this is pretty much the first time that ethereum turned uh, into a um, sorry <clears throat> into a deflationary asset uh, and you can see here white charts have a pretty good uh table here on where was it where was it uh so october 19 here down below we have 21 one, sorry 120 million point uh, five three ethereum in existence and here november 12 we have less than that we have uh, 0 0.52 uh, 51 sorry ethereum in existence so during the uh, volume that we came uh, across and you can see here let me just open the uh, binance chart this was pretty much the highest volume ever on binance by far this was march 2020 if we zoom in a little bit uh, this was the volume on march 2020 uh, let me just uh, mark it here and the volume was nuts you know uh let me just scale it properly okay so there it is this was the march 2020 level we broke out of it significantly like probably double the volume that we had um, and same happened with ethereum pretty much and that's why ethereum uh, actually no which exchange is this again binance okay so ethereum had a lot less volume going on but still it turns into a deflationary asset and this is extremely powerful i think and pretty much the next uh, opportunity that i'm going to see uh, and I discuss with you is with the uh, centralized exchanges which are mostly built on ethereum so i think definitely in the long run the whole fiasco that we're watching is a huge benefit uh, and a huge advantage for Ethereum in the long term. Uh, and I would definitely be buying more Ethereum, um, probably equal size with, with Bitcoin. And if we see the chart, it actually also reversed mid-range. Um, and I'm a little bit salty that I didn't buy Ethereum here on the dip. I had my orders uh, somewhere at, uh, lower around... Uh, thousand dollars because i'm you know stingy when it gets to such kind of dumps uh, but this was still a good buying opportunity i know some of you bought it uh, ETH here and made some money on the bounce here which was quite significant you know 20 23 uh, percent candle we had on the day uh, from the bottom if you caught it it's 25 percent return which is pretty solid if you sold actually uh, but i'm still not interested in uh uh, you know, trading so much Ethereum and Bitcoin, but more of uh, accumulating them. And if this plays out and if we have more bankruptcies and uh, volume starts fading out, I'm pretty sure we can uh, get to this level of $1,000 and definitely I'll be scaling in uh, some Ethereum for the long run. Um, what other tokens I was shopping during the crash? Um, not much, to be honest. I still had orders again uh, on key support levels they didn't get triggered here um i should have this is a mistake that i uh you know point out on my uh, site i definitely i was seeing this live uh, before i went to bed on the day and i could have bought some starter positions somewhere around this level around 78 cents for matic and this was a pretty epic bounce almost 50 percent actually more than 50 percent from the bottom but who who catches the bottom you know it's it's kind of risky and uh, it's really hard to actually catch the bottom so this would have been a nice trade uh, but still you know I'm okay same with Adam I had some orders uh, somewhere around this level and just zoom out a little bit to see the, the support level I had some orders somewhere around here uh, didn't hit them but that's fine you know uh, what else what else uh, optimism I also had some orders here uh, but I'm ready to average down I still keep these positions open and also some link uh i'm interested it's getting closer almost got triggered my entries were around uh 5.3 dollars if i remember correctly 
Um, I removed them now just because I need some uh, cash and I don't have that much cash on the exchanges. Uh, so yeah, this is what um, I'm looking for uh, to accumulate. Uh, uh, also, so actually was an interesting trade that happened. I started averaging down, uh, but <laughs> obviously it came out that um, uh, XT FTX has a lot of so and people started panicking and dumping. I was buying the dip here. Uh, I had orders. They got triggered perfectly actually at resist at support. However, on the way up at the same day, you know, we had somewhere around here a bounce and I was like, okay, I'm better off the risking just because of the whole fiasco that's going on. Uh, and I took a small loss on the entire position here that averaged down. Uh, but I still keep my original sold that I have in my portfolio. Um, I also find this as a mistake because this was an epic bounce. And usually after so many red days, after a drop of, what is this, like 70%, there's definitely a bounce somewhere out there. But I got footed, <laughs> to be honest. And I decided, okay, it's a small position, but I better the risk just in case we go really, really uh, down. Um, this was a 90% bounce. So yeah, makes me a little bit salty. Uh, but anyway, you know, let's move to the next one. We're going to have much more opportunities, I believe. Uh, like the two ones that I wanted to discuss, I initiated a GMX position here. Uh, why is that? GMX is one of the two major uh, perpetual decentralized exchanges. So pretty much you can use leverage to trade on this exchange, the centralized exchange. They also have really cool staking where you get part of the uh, fees in Ethereum, not in their own token. So that's also pretty cool. And I've posted a lot of um, uh, research on this in the chat. So you've probably seen this already. And it's been in, uh, showing very much of strength. You know, I didn't buy here the dip uh, just because, um, you know, it was mid-range. I was focusing on other tokens that have a higher conviction for the long run. Uh, anyway, I'm going to leave this here. And um, I just couldn't focus on that many tokens. And when the market is dumping, it's impossible to buy everything. You know? uh, so yeah, I missed a better entry, much better entry, because from the bottom here, we're already 80% down. And it has been four green days. Uh, however, the risk to reward here is not terrible. You can see here, we had a lot of reactions at these levels around 42 $45. And the 100 day moving average here we can play it as um, a risk management level however i'm also fine with keeping this for the long run and averaging down however i think if another exchange especially drops the decentralized exchanges will become a quick narrative and this could be a quick trade for 40 percent to the all-time high and potentially we can even see a breakout above this uh, so I want to have a little bit of a size here. It's not too big. You know, I'm, as I mentioned, ready to average down. But I want to have some skin in the game in case this plays out. Uh, similar story is DYDX. It's the same exchange. Uh, it's a perpetual exchange uh, on the centralized platform. And this has had even a bigger run. Uh, that's why I didn't initiate anything here. Uh, we are 115% from the bottom. However, you can see we are testing this accumulation range so on the hourly chart we can see this even better if price continues squeezing into here and potentially best case scenario uh, would be to see some kind of retracement potentially let's say crypto.com uh, uh, also goes for bankruptcy somewhere around here definitely this and gms i think have a lot of room to run uh, and i'll be watching this also very very carefully uh, but again, this is a relatively small position size for me, but even as you can see it on the 30 minutes, it keeps running and it has a lot of volume. So this is giving me a little bit more confidence that the narrative in combination with everything that we've seen could play out uh, because of this. Cool. So this has been my overview. Uh, let me know if you have questions. I see there are some questions in chat. Let me just look also at my notes if I have missed something uh okay not anything let's just go through the chat glad i had nothing left in there and haven't used ftx in a year great for you mr ether 
Uh, when you say you buy crypto, does that include the total of 23% of your portfolio on exchange? Yes. So the money that I'm currently using, actually 20, 30%, I'm starting to reduce this, as I mentioned. Um, and I'm probably down to low 20 and I'll be getting into the teens uh, probably early next week. Uh, so yes, I'm buying with uh, the assets that I have on exchanges. And when it comes to my recent Bitcoin purchases and potentially uh, my future Ethereum purchases, I just buy it and then I send it to the cold storage right away. And that's something that I also wanted to mention. Um, I'm going to probably do a full tutorial. It's going to turn out like a one hour tutorial for security and risk management of your entire portfolio. And one of the things I'm going to mention here is that uh, I have many different exchanges and that's the first way I differentiate. And also, very important, I have linked all of the exchanges between each other and I have also linked my hardware wallets with them and also my MetaMask because I have enabled whitelists for every, a lot. Was it white? No, white lists for NFTs. <laughs> Allow lists uh, for transfers. And this means basically that I can only send to the addresses that I have added. And there's a 24 hour to 48 hour freeze on these uh, addresses. And that's just another step of security. So what I've done is I've added all of my accounts uh, within each other so that I, if, let's say, there are fears that KuCoin can go bankrupt, I can easily move my funds within seconds uh, to a MetaMask or hardware wallet uh, or potentially to another exchange. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a huge fan still of DEXs. I definitely have to start learning them better. And I still use uh, centralized exchanges for most of my trading. And I do keep funds there. But again, I'm, I'm de-risking that. And also some exchanges like Coinbase, they pretty much uh, have instant... Uh, withdrawals and deposits and if there's something going on and you don't have enough money in the account you can use such kind of exchange uh, to quickly put more funds from your bank uh, okay next question <clears throat> i'm planning to do a long-term investment monthly investment should i do 50 50 bitcoin and ethereum or go with only one of them that is up to you andre uh, it really depends on your risk tolerance, how much you believe in each of them, uh, how long is uh, is the period that you're going to look into and hold them. Uh, there are many, many variables and we're all different people. Uh, I know that uh, the stage that I'm at, I'll probably be buying 50-50 split. Uh, maybe, maybe in the future, I might give a little bit more edge to Ethereum just because I believe in it not seeing uh, it has better potential or whatever. Uh, but definitely, this is something that you need to sit down and evaluate on your own uh, and to make this decision. And it doesn't have to be a fixed rule. You know, one month you can do 50-50. The next month, if you see Bitcoin dropping significantly, you can just buy Bitcoin 100%. While if it Ethereum is holding up, you might not want to buy at these prices. You know, it's really up to you. So uh, just uh, my thoughts here. Uh, okay, next question from Kevin. Uh, was Coinbase considered safer than FTX before all the FTX problems occurred? In my opinion, yes. Uh, Coinbase is a publicly listed company. Uh, so I think that is very, very, very significant. Uh, FTX is not, although they are heavily regulated, or at least they claim to be. There are different ent entities. And you know that if you're in the US, it will be your account will be on FTX US, similar to how Binance splits them. And uh, the other one, the international one, which actually first got in trouble, is not that heavily re regulated, obviously. Uh, and Coinbase, I think, is much uh, stricter and they always keep their funds, or at least they send me an email that they keep their funds. But I wouldn't have them 100% uh, trust in, uh, in these platforms. Kraken is another one that I think are planning to to have an IPO uh, at some point in the future. But again, you know, just don't keep that many assets. Uh, okay, Dale has another question. Can you talk about the different types of wallets in that video? Uh, the cold storage versus how? Yeah, sure. No problem. I use mostly hard wallets uh, and MetaMask. Just uh, MetaMask is more like a transitional one, but I'll definitely uh, share all my thoughts there. 
hi, how much percentage are you buying? Uh, or it's always different. Uh, yeah, it's different. So from the recent buys, uh, let me just go to the daily chart. So overall here on this averaging down, uh, my total size on this entire position here, the four buys that I had, it's probably, I would say, 2 or 3% from my overall portfolio, uh, somewhere around that. Uh, but that obviously varies a lot. It's just my portfolio at this given moment. But with time, I might be adding more and more cash. Uh, so, you know, it will totally mix up the percentages. But my rule going off uh, from here will be if we dump hard, I'll be buying heavier. And if we just consolidate here for years on end, I will be averaging down uh, and buying uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum every single month. So I have a fixed amount that I'm going to be investing and that will be separate from my crypto portfolio that you guys know. Uh, that would be more of, you know, I get my money from uh, my work and part of it is dedicated to crypto and mostly buying Bitcoin and Ethereum. And the remaining cash that I have would be more dedicated for active trading and accumulating altcoins that I have talked about uh, in one of the last videos. Next question. How safe is to keep money in Trust Wallet and KuCoin? Um, I don't have experience with Trust Wallet. I don't know uh, how trustworthy they are, to be honest. So I cannot give you a concrete uh answer to this kucoin i wouldn't keep that much money on kucoin uh, and actually one of my strategies nowadays is to use futures and keep just the minimum amount of money especially on exchanges like kucoin uh, and use leverage for specific trades instead of buying a heavier size on spot and that's all because of everything that's going on <clears throat> okay i don't see any other question guys uh, let me know if you do have some questions uh, because we're going to be wrapping this up if you don't is everyone clear on this has everyone had bad experience with exchanges are you guys uh, you know managing everything uh, if you have uh, money on crypto.com or on any other smaller exchange i would definitely advise everyone to just take them out uh one more thing that i remember now is another token that i'm carefully watching this would probably be a longer term play um uh, where is it let me just find here but nexo there is nexo is one that um i've done some research i haven't posted it yet just because it's been a wild week obviously uh, but nexo is very similar to uh, what celsius was <laughs> uh nexo.com i think was their website uh or not I ah, okay <clears throat> so these guys are offering like eight percent up to 12 percent if you hold their token uh apy they have a card they're working on a credit card which will be quite innovative um, and they have uh, an exchange from maybe a few months already they have an exchange, uh, and these guys have been steadily building. I'm a little bit biased just because they're a Bulgarian team and their headquarters is here in Bulgaria. But after everything that's going on, if they survive, if these guys survive and their token doesn't drop to the bottom uh, and they don't do anything shady because they claim that they don't have exposure to FTX, they didn't have any exposure to Celsius, they actually try to buy celsius when the whole thing was going on um, they are not doing shady stuff they have audits and stuff which are not perfect but they still you know have it and advertise it but if this token holds up here uh and forms some kind of accumulation in this area i would definitely be interesting potentially in a breakout somewhere around here uh just draw it but if we hold this level or maybe lower we form an accumulation and then there is a pattern showing a potential breakout of accumulation. I think this will be a very interesting play just because people forget everything that has happened uh, in the past. And they, they are still not a big player in the US just because they're trying to go through all of the regulations that the 
US is requiring and so on. Uh, so I would definitely keep an eye on them because they have a lot of potential. They might become the bigger player in the space without much of competition because everyone else pretty much went bankrupt. And if they do things right, uh, this could be a, a big one uh, in the long run. Uh, okay, I see another question and we're going to wrap it up. Uh, what's your top five out coin besides it? And can you say something about QNT? Uh, QNT had a great run. I, I haven't done the research on QNT, uh, so I cannot tell you anything about the fundamentals. Uh, you can see that this is not really a full chart. Uh, on QNT, uh, let's try this one. Yeah, uh, so you can see here uh, we had a pop above this support uh, resistance level. Sorry. Now we are pretty much falling back from space uh, and from the top, we're already down like 55%. Uh, I need to look into this just because of uh, the pop that it had. It probably wasn't just uh, by chance, but definitely if it holds this level after everything that's been going on and just accumulates more and more uh, because it has been accumulating since January, so pretty much for a year here. Um, if it holds up, definitely it could be a player. Uh, let me check. It had a little run, but it didn't go that parabolic. I mean, it went parabolic here. There are a few candles. But usually I avoid uh, tokens that have gone parabolic for a long time, especially if I don't trust in their fundamentals. Uh, but this doesn't look too bad. You know, this doesn't look too bad. If it, uh, again, doesn't break down completely, and probably this is not the full chart here, uh, but not going to look for one for one now. Um, this might have a future, so I need to do some work here and see what is it about. And, uh, and yeah, my top five altcoins, I think I already mentioned some of them. Uh, so definitely Optimism, Starkware is one I've discussed previously. I'm waiting for a token drop. Matic, I think, will be huge. And thank God it dropped because I was really having FOMO here at these levels. They're building, 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 and they're the top, I would say, layer two solution for Ethereum. Uh, Atom is one that I'm watching. GMX, I mentioned. Uh, Link is also one. I, I've heard a lot of people talking about this. Uh, Link pretty much can solve the problem that uh, currently the exchanges are facing. Uh, and they provide on-chain proof of reserves as a service. So potentially in the future, link can also be huge. Uh, what else? Let me look at the list. These are the main names, I would say. Uh, maybe other bigger centralized exchanges. Uni also potentially if uh, we play out the narrative. Uh, and yeah, probably there will be more and more tokens coming up. Uh, decentralized social media is also something that I'm keeping an eye on. Uh, and yeah, these are the main ones, but uh, whenever I find a new token or a new narrative, I, I always share it with you guys. So yeah, pretty much. Can you answer my last question? Uh, maybe I missed it, Kevin. Sorry. Do you think Tether is a dangerous stable coin? Uh, I'm not sure if it's dangerous, but I have minimum exposure to USDT. Uh, it's been known to unpack for a bit on the past, uh, but that's, I think, mainly because of uh, FUD, uh, USD. Let me just show you the chart. Uh, there's a lot of FUD always surrounding uh, USDT, and here even um, at the worst moment where there were the most rumors, it went down to 94 cents for dollar. Uh, the recent drop here was a lot less, to $97. Uh, 97 cents sorry i have minimum exposure and i will be decreasing it and i'm on i'm even thinking to just keep sorry guys <clears throat> several thousand dollars uh in stables but just for the trading on futures and that will be a split between usdt usdc and busd um, and definitely i'm leaning more towards uh cash in the bank for now and just as I mentioned, transfer money, buy whatever I'm going to buy and just move it to code storage. Um, if this plays out, to be honest, and if uh, UDT collapses, that would be a huge blow also because we can go to coin market cap and you'll see pretty much it's 
one of the biggest volume makers in the crypto space, uh, third overall uh, with just in the 24 hours spam here, 36 billion, 37 almost in volume. Uh, so this is huge. And if something happens to USDT, I think uh, it will crush everyone. <laughs> definitely. Uh, and definitely a lot of people will lose a lot of money again, even after everything that's happened. Uh, so again, just keep minimum exposure uh, on uh, stable coins. Uh, and yeah, just be ready to lose them. Even if it doesn't play out, I think it's worth uh, playing the safe card. Cool. Uh, I don't see any other questions on the queue. Uh, thank you everyone that joined. Uh, I'm going to post this a little bit later. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. See you and stay safe, guys.